Hello, one and all. I'm Lorelli, and this is my channel, Mega Publix. And today we are between session one and two of our multiplayer Horse Lords game. Uh, this is a. This is. I'm sitting down to record this for the sake of speed three. It's really fast for commentary. It's sometimes hard to uh, sit down and focus and look at my family, look at the finer details of the game, look at what's going on, and even tell you what's going on. We've also got a lot of people and. Oftentimes we'll have a lot of people talking at once because of that makes it a little difficult sometimes for the people at home watching to know what's going on. So I plan on doing these things in between sessions. So let's look at me, let's look at my family, and then we'll look at the war here. So, Kagen Ridvan, the crew. I'm a brilliant strategist, I'm quick, uh, adventurer, deceitful, all in all pretty good trickster. Inspiring leader, a terrific, terrific warrior by all regard. Uh, my current heir is my half-brother. I have lots and lots of brothers. My father, he, uh, he had a lot of concubines and a lot of children in general. So, Kute, I believe is his name. He's alright at best. He has one daughter. My children here would be the ones to inherit, though, if I tribalize, which, not tribalize, I'm sorry, um, feudalize, which is what I'm thinking about doing. I'm thinking about settling as soon as I occupy all of Gaznavid. The thing with that, and bear with me on this, is I, I'm going to occupy all of it unless the Seljuks join the war. Because I can, first off. Number two, because the Seljuks are next to me, and I just need as many Turkish Zoroastrians as physically possible in this world. When I, if I have, if I don't settle right away and I continue to invade India, 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 <laughs> uh, suddenly my tongue is all weird. Okay, if I continue to invade India, I'm probably going to keep those people in place as they are, but I'm going to try to slowly convert them. Why would I want to do that, you might ask? Well, let's look at my army here. You'll notice something very interesting when I hover over special units. I have elephants in my army. I have elephants and horse archers in my army because I have this major Indian king here who does love me because I've been increasing relations with him. Uh, it's unsustainable to have too many of these people, well, it would be much more sustainable if he was Zoroastrian, and converting him is something that I need to do in the long run. Speaking of converting things, once I win this rebellion, these guys are going to be Turkish Zoroastrians. Uh, they are done. They have lost the right to their land. For all intents and purposes, and they're just done. They, they lose. They're done. Um, with this whole full o occupying thing, I'm a little afraid that I'm setting a, uh, a bad precedent. Uh, setting a precedent for essentially total war for the other players. And it's completely hypocritical of me to say that because I'm doing it. Or to even say that it's not okay. And it's really, it is okay. But, the, the computer even does it. But, I am hoping that it's not overdone. Because with the exception of here and maybe, I don't know, if I attack the Seljuks later on, I might just take as much as I need to and then end the war. Just for the sake of... I don't know, I don't want to fight the Seljuks forever. The Seljuks do have a nice little threat on the inside. And that would, of course, be Stalin. But St Stalin wants independence. Everybody knows that. He has 100% decadence. He'll destroy himself if he goes independent now. So it's a project for him. He's got to work on this whole decadence thing. So in the meantime, he's just going to eat the Seljuks from inside. He specifically told me that he's going to leave Persia to me. So I hope that is still the truth. Uh, let's, let's take another look back at me. Let's take a look at my children in case I do feudalize. The first one, I took him. He's a wolf child. There's nothing else special about him other than he was born of a wolf. And then I've got two twins here. Uh, Bazid, and I'm really sorry if I'm pronouncing these incorrectly. I will probably look it up later, the actual pronunciation. He's quick, and his sister, who's also his twin, is also quick. 
I kind of want this kid to be in charge in the long run. Getting there is a little bit of a task considering I'm nomadic. If I, vat if I feudalize, he's still one step away. There's still this kid here. That'll be all right. Um, let's talk about other people. Let's see how other people are doing. Uh, El Turkey, he's doing quite well. Uh, he's involved in my war. This is, again, Duke of Bacon's. Um, I don't think that he wants to feudalize. I think he wants to become Khan of Khans. I think he wants to expand this way. I am still a little afraid of him coming down from the north. But I don't think that he's going to take anything major. I know he probably wants these Silk Road provinces from me, which is totally understandable. I don't want him to take southern Silk Road provinces, but I might work out a deal with him. Uh, I don't know how many of these are Silk Road. Let's take a look. Ooh. I might work out a deal with him to just get like one or two of these for him not attack. I'll see what he wants. Uh, Duke is always a wild card, and that's kind of what I like about him. To be honest with you, he uh, really does sort of shake games up, and I do admire that. He's a little impatient. He's kind of treacherous, but he does shake things up, and that's something that we always need. We've got also got a uh, do do do. Marco is this one. He's coming back for this session, probably for another good. Two hours, maybe, maybe three. He might stay the whole run. Who knows? I feel bad for the Europeans sometimes because every so often we have these later games. Uh, that's why you really haven't seen that much of Ermac or um, Rusty or anyone in these the newer things that we've been doing. Anyway, um, Marco is probably gonna. He's probably gonna take take his little empire back, and then. I feel like there's going to be a lot of strife between Al Turkey and the Mongols. Or what will be the Mongols. And eventually the actual Mongols are going to be coming. And that is a fear and a threat. I don't believe the lower invasion still spawn because essentially I am the lower nomadic invasion. Like, I don't think that the the Timurids come up or anything like that. I think there's actually a way to form the Timurids, but I'm not 100% sure how. Um, let's see now. Epic Fail. He is still Satan worshipping, which apparently has become the main Orthodox religion. I know Kramer is threatening him to become Catholic, uh, which is entirely possible. Kramer here is married to the Empress of Byzantium, which, by the way, isn't in Civil War. It's just split, uh, which is something that he's going to have to deal with. And there's really no way that I can stop Kramer from inheriting Byzantium, and there's really no reason for me to want to stop Kramer from doing that because he's between... Well, the Seljuks are between me and him. The Seljuks are a threat to both of us, and damaging the Seljuks, it just helps us both so much... And there's no reason for him to continue to pour into Persia. I don't know what's going to happen with Epic. Uh, he might. He, right now, I think he's a tributary of Kramer, or maybe he's not. Maybe I'm losing my mind. I don't know. He might settle. Right now, he's seven over domain uh, domain limit. Which does that even affect the regular vassals? Wrong government type desires duchy. It doesn't appear to. But I do think that... Well, okay, yeah, it does affect the individual... The vassals underneath him normally would be pissed off, but apparently they're not. Because he's a nomad. It does, however, affect... What he gets from those pro or what he gets from those holdings, uh, every one over the uh, domain limit is another ten percent reduction in wealth. And I think I know they nerfed, nerfed North Korea mode, so I think it's a reduction, a huge reduction in soldiers as well. I think he actually might be more powerful if he uh, if he feudalizes. But the world will never well unless he does feudalize. Be cool if he feudalized like. 
in a city around here and just became a merchant republic. A merchant republic that is sitting on the Silk Road. That would that would be such a cool thing. I I would really like to see that. what is this? Who is this merchant rep Is this a Byzantium mer or did Kramer make a merchant republic here? Um I don't know, but we're almost out of time, so let's focus on some other things here real quick. I don't know what Jay Crop's gonna do. I think he's just gonna push west. And then up here we've got Vril somewhere. I don't really know which one he is. I'll point him out in game when the game starts, uh or when the next session starts. But he's gotta take uh his kingdom back. Which he should be more than capable of doing. It's going back down here. Uh showed you family, showed you Let's take a look at my vassals here real fast. They don't really hate me that well. Some of them do. He hates me. Raised levy mostly because of, I've raised levies for so long. And that's going to be unfortunate for him because I need the levies for significantly longer because I've got a few rebellions. Which I should take care of pretty quickly. And this invasion should come to an end. All in all, I think the start of next session I'll be in a pretty powerful position. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe if you've been enjoying what you've been watching. As always, have a wonderful day. Goodbye.